Hello, I'm taking on a challenge to beat every playable Nintendo published game. Welcome to the next episode. The next game is Bomb BN. We've got a bit of an interesting one this time around. If you look at the release date of this title, you'll notice we've stepped back in time a few years. We're back in 1979, which is around the time of some of the earliest games in the challenge. So, why did I wait so long to play this one? Well, this one is sort of similar to Head on N, in that it was an arcade game developed by a different company that Nintendo was given the rights to make their own version of. However, I initially held back on playing the game, since unlike Head on N, which actually had differences between Sega's version and Nintendo's version, this appears to have no differences at all, which threw me off a bit. I always knew this game existed, since we could even see flyers of it that specifically say Bomb BN. However, when I first started the challenge, I wasn't sure if Bomb BN was just the same game as Bomb B, or if the game is actually different, and the ROM for Bomb BN was simply lost to time. Much later on in the challenge, after looking back and analyzing footage from the actual arcade machine, I discovered that the two versions of the game did seem to use the same exact ROM. So it turns out that since they are the same, playing Bomb B would be the same as playing Bomb B N. So, what even is Bomb B? Bomb B was actually the sequel to another game called GB, and both of these were developed and published by Namco. These two games were Namco's very first arcade games that they released independently. Unfortunately for Namco, it doesn't appear like either of these games did very well commercially, so I doubt Nintendo's version fared all that well either. Fortunately for Namco though, Galaxian was just around the corner, so it wouldn't be long before Namco would pull ahead in the arcade world. Alright, let's take a look at my time with the game. This one is another block breaker game, although we can see some pinball influences here too. We've got blocks to break, bumpers to earn points, a spinner in the middle to slow down your ball, and even gutters down in the corners. Additionally, you've also got two paddles you control, although you can't control them independently, so moving one will also move the other. I don't really know what a good goal for this one would be, but similar to other games like this, I wanted to at least see all the major mechanics in the game. In my first run, the first big thing I accomplished was clearing out all the green blocks. Soon after, they just respawned in. Looks like full clearing all the blocks isn't really the goal here like it is for Breakout. I guess you're supposed to just keep breaking them and rack up points. Another thing I noticed was that passing over the letters of Namco caused them to change colors. It took me a while to actually get it, but I knew changing them all to light blue was a mechanic I wanted to see. Despite having two paddles, hitting the ball can be pretty tough. It starts to get really fast as the game goes on too, and your paddles are just so tiny. Eventually during this run, I cleared out all the blocks to the right, which caused one of the 10-point bumpers to switch to 100. It's probably a safe bet to assume that clearing the ones on the left will make the left bumper worth more, but I wonder what clearing all these on the top will do. It took a few lives, but eventually I managed to clear out all the blue blocks on the top. This made an all-new 1000 bumper appear. Time to rack up some points. Oh, and for some reason, an arrow appeared here too. I guess they really wanted me to hit that 1000 bumper? I hit it a handful of times, and for some reason, the arrow got closer and closer to the bumper. Eventually, while the arrow was touching the 1000 bumper, the ball bounced into the bumper one last time, and the bumper totally exploded. Whoa! Okay, I know it's not all that hype, but I'll take what I can get with this one. After exploding the bumper, all the blocks in the top section completely reset. I actually think this makes for a pretty good goal for this one, but there were still a couple more mechanics I wanted to see. I still haven't lit up all the Namco lights, and I haven't cleared out one of these stacks of greens tucked away on the side. One thing I haven't really mentioned yet either is that you have one safety block in each of the gutters, and once you use this up, the gutters become much more dangerous. However, while I was focusing on the 1000 bumper, I cleared all the blocks on the left, and it turns out this refreshes the gutter block too. Soon after all this, I got a game over, but I still wanted to see those mechanics, so I gave it another run. In the next run, I actually had quite a bit of trouble lighting up all the Namco letters. It's not really easy to control where the ball goes, so all I was really able to do was try and use the upper paddle to only let the ball fall where I needed the letters to be lit up. I went this whole run without being able to get it, but finally, on the start of the next run, I got lucky and lit up all five letters of Namco. Doing this simply adds a multiplier to your bonus score, which I imagine can stack up if you light them all again. The only thing left was to clear out all the blocks in one of the columns on the side. I've lost a few more lives in the process, but during this run, I managed to clear out all the green blocks on the right. This made an arrow appear on the bottom right gutter. I guess next I need to break the safety block down there? Soon after, I managed to send the ball into the gutter, and doing so caused the text, Same player shoots again to appear. I didn't totally get what this meant at first, but basically it just gives you an extra life. With that, I had seen all the major mechanics in the game, and after my next game over, I decided I was done with the game. It's a little hard to find information on this one, and unless someone lets me know of some kind of other major mechanic I might have missed, my time with Bomb BN was complete. On to the review. While I can appreciate Namco's attempt to create something a little more unique by merging the ideas of Breakout and Pinball, in practice there isn't a whole lot more to this one than a typical Breakout clone. 
While there is a lot more going on with what your ball is bouncing into, it still ultimately just feels like all you really end up focusing on is making sure your ball doesn't drop below your paddles, similar to Monkey Magic and Color TV game Block Breaker. It's not a bad game or anything, but I just didn't find it all that interesting. I gave the game a 5 out of 10. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more of these in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss out on the next one. Also leave a like if you enjoyed it, since it will help the channel grow and motivate me to continue this series. I hope I will see you in the next step of my quest to beat every Nintendo game.